guy. Who do you think you are? I am. I warm it up like Kane in his prime. Fuck with us, you insane in the mind. You cowards way out of line. Money talk, boy, you wasting my time. You don't want to put the work in. You just want to taste of the shine. We'll talk so it's hard to trust. I'm in it for the long ride. Like I drive a charter bus. Scars and blood. From the deadly bars I bust. Hey, everybody, how's it going? This is Daniel. You're listening to Live, Laugh, Lariat. And I am joined by the very talented, very hard-hitting Troy Parker. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, sir. How about yourself? Doing good, doing good. Uh, congratulations before we start. I think I had it just pulled up here a second. Uh, 163 out of the BW500 that just came out yesterday or the day before. That's pretty high up there. Yeah, I was in Pittsburgh when I saw that. I didn't get to see that at home, but it was very... It means a lot to me. Like, yeah. there's everybody's like, oh, don't we don't put a lot of stock in these lists, but just to be recognized by somebody with yeah. like, with it, it shows you that your work isn't going unnoticed, especially because I wasn't anywhere to be found on that list last year when yeah, I felt like I had done I had done some things to be at least in some kind of number, and then to come in at 163, so high up as opposed oh, yeah. to not being on the list at all last year, it means a lot for sure. Yeah, you're you're higher than our truth. That's a <laughs> that's a take for some people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. I'm gonna take my place on the list, and I'm gonna leave it there. Is the way I yeah. see it, you know. I'm not gonna sit here and t- I'm not gonna say where I should and shouldn't be. Awesome. Well, I'm happy to see you there. Definitely well deserved. We've had a hell of a year, a hell mm-hmm. of a, a past few years as far as uh, what you've been doing in the ring. Uh, but outside of the ring, where can everybody find you on social media? Uh, is there any way they can support you uh, with merch or you just want to be I, do, I do have a, uh, 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 what is this thing? I don't even know the name, the website name, the wrestle, the, because they, they run our tees, but. Oh, uh, pro, wrestling. Yes, pro wrestling tees. I don't move a lot of merch through there, but in case you want to get some designs, like you're not able to see me at a show where I typically have all my shirts. I have most of my designs up there just Troy Parker shop. And then as far as social media is it's Troy Parker official on Facebook and Instagram and then Troy Parker pro on Twitter, but that's about it in terms yeah. of social medias. Uh, you on Twitter much these days. Try not to be, <laughs> try not to be Twitter is like a, is a cesspool of everybody else's opinion. And yeah. I'm cool with everybody else's opinion, but a lot of the times like wrestling is like my one and only focus in life. And a lot of the yeah. times I don't like to see, something I like in wrestling and then everybody else seems to have an opinion on why it's the wrong thing or it's not the good thing. So try to stay away from Twitter. Like I'll stay on to like, if I miss a pay-per-view or I'm not able to watch something live, I'll hit the quick updates on that. But other than that, I'm not a, not a Twitter guy. Instagram though. Instagram is probably the safest move for me. It's what I'm most active on. Yeah. Instagram, um, like the reels can, Mm -hmm. can be a, a, a weird place, but it also like if, if you hone it correctly, it yeah. just shows you like nothing but all kinds of different wrestling, which is pretty cool. That's like it's so like every so often, like it and I do this like with TikTok as well. I do also have a TikTok. I should have mentioned that. It's Troy Parker official as well. But like TikTok, like those algorithms, they'll like they'll feed you what you want, but all of a sudden it'll give you like, hey, how about this one thing that you have no idea about? Yeah. If, you, if you go to the comments, if you like watch that reel a little bit too long, yeah, the next seven are gonna be that one thing because they're they yeah. want you to have multiple different focuses and not just the one. Yeah. Yeah, TikTok. There's some some weird stuff they'll get you with too. Like, uh, there's I, I don't I don't think anybody should watch this, but I found a video of this guy just talking about like his life in the most honest way, and it was. <laughs> I just Thank might make the podcast, but he was talking about how he was like trying to get an STD test because he started at the Goodwill tomorrow and like all of this stuff. And like, it was just like, and next thing you know, I, I'm watching a seven minute video about this guy. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, that dude's life better than your own. It's yeah, like, uh, yeah. And then you get the update videos. Like he didn't get the job at Goodwill because he over. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, but yeah, um, check, check you out there. Um, when I was, I, I didn't put it together. I like clipped your highlight video to like make mm-hmm. the intro. It's a great look, bro. If you need a if you need a job, like that's a that's a great <laughs> intro video. I saw yeah, I was yeah. watching. I was like, man, I did some of this. Like this is yeah, like, this yeah. Is- you you do some some really cool shit. Mm-hmm. Um, how like I guess we'll get into like the big story, but for people who don't know Troy Parker, 
how would you kind of label yourself? Um, I am a heavyweight that really doesn't, I don't like to pigeonhole myself into one different thing because I, I, I like to do so many different styles of wrestling. Like yeah. there's a time and place like where I like to do like Lucha stuff. I don't do it often, but there's a time and place for it. There's a time and place. I like to hit hard a majority of the time. So yeah. that's what I say like heavyweight's probably the best way to describe me. Like the super heavyweight striker is the the moniker I go by currently. And it's like it's, it's what made me fall in love with wrestling even more is like the style, like yeah. the striking style of wrestling is just such a a un like it's a slept on art form in my opinion that like not a lot of people really take the time to like, there's so many great strikers out there and like all, like all the time you hear about them being one of the best, like the best wrestlers in the world. It's yeah. reason. like striking is like undefeated and it's the same with MMA. Like look at MMA. People talk about like the most entertaining fights. And a lot of the time it's people standing up, slugging it out. Yeah. Like, it's Ooh. where. What's your Mount Rushmore of like strikers and wrestling? Oh, dude. Okay. So for going all time greats in terms of just pure strikers, Malachi Black, Kota Ibushi, Kenta. And I think there's, this might be sort of a wild card. Oh. There's a huge case for somebody like, I would say, Oni Lorcan, Biff Busick, that dude is a guy yeah. who can be in the ring. I think mm -hmm. that last slot could be interchangeable with a bunch of different people, though, because, like, yeah. once you get to the high levels of striking, I say, like, Malachi, Kenta, and Kota Ibushi, like, those are three people that, mm -hmm. like, have structured the style of striking that we see today. Yeah. So, like, they're non-negotiables, in my opinion. Yeah. But, like, they're so – you could – make a case for Kenny Omega, just him being like the best wrestler all time. Will Ospreay has gone from like a great high flyer to a phenomenal striker. And I think there's just so many people where that last slot can be so interchangeable. And there's so yeah. many wrestlers that you just can't, you can't put it down on the list. Yeah. Um, I, speaking of like the Instagram reels, I saw um, a highlight clip of um, Chris Hero and Tommy End when they were a tag team in I think PWG. Mm -hmm. Like talk about like two dudes just like hitting hard. Oh my gosh, dude. That's that's a, like the striking is what made me fall in love with wrestling all over again. Like everybody has that story where like they come into wrestling when they're a kid and they love it, but then they fall out of it and something brings them back every time. Right. But it's like the striking for sure. And I'm like, dude, how is wrestling supposed to be fake? What yeah. am I what am I not getting here that's like we, yeah. these guys are hitting each other? Yeah. And like the more that I've learned, like the magic behind it, the more I realized there really isn't that much magic. You know what I mean? Yeah, there they're, isn't. They're beating they, the shit out of each other. Oh, and it's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, something I've noticed recently is like, so that you've got people like you, you've got like the Calvin Tankman's, like the people that are out there hitting hard and like adapting that style. But I think from like, um, like a women's wrestling perspective, I think consistently the striking is like so much more elevated for women these days dude you you're i think you're hitting the nail on the head there bro. yeah like, like julia for example like she uh -huh. just made her nxt debut but going back and watching some of her stardom stuff is just it's it's otherworldly yeah. another another joshi wrestler me yumashita like she's one of my favorites she mm -hmm. is she is like deadly mako sadamora i just watched a tag match between uh where they were on opposite sides and every time they got in the ring together and it was just fantastic, dude. It was yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, even, even on the local level, like here in North Carolina, you've got like the Caitlin Marie's you've got the oh, yeah. Brittany Jade's like, um, uh, Mila Johnson, like, and, and it kind of goes everywhere. Like you go up North and, or East and West Virginia, like, like where you're at, there, there's solid people everywhere. And I think in a lot of instances, they're kind of putting the guys to shame. Mm, I, I can see that for sure but but yeah like I, I love striking it's as I've grown older like because I think we all like go through phases where we like you fall in love with wrestling for like 
the what appeals to you as a kid and then you find your reason to like stick around or you hone in your niche like uh, as i've gotten older like that really hard hitting like go back to fucking like all japan of the 90s where these dudes are literally killing each other like kenta kobashi misawa like just dropping each other i didn't even mention any of those people and i'm not rushing yeah. like that's gonna get me a lot of hate but like that's those once again two of like where you can see the striking style and yeah. how they're called the, some of the greatest today it's just yeah. those things go hand in hand bro they do yeah it's i think it's believability mm. like i think I don't remember who it was, but somebody says, like, in a match, it's almost to the point where they want, like, instead of, like, a pop, they want, like, the, like, where people yes. are just, like, oh, fuck. Ooh. Yes, bro. That's, like, those are, like, one of the first things, like, I actively tried to work for in my matches. We're not the moments where people, like, a pop is great. A pop is fantastic. Yeah. But, like, if you can get those moments where people are going, oh, shit, like, he, yeah. he got him bad. Like, yeah. those everybody needs those little seconds of like, oh shit, what am I watching for a second? Yeah, where yeah. they're like, oh no, 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 I'm in a, I'm watching a wrestling show. Mm -hmm. like, you need those moments because those those moments where people can fucking throw their hands up in the air and I'll still do it to this day where I'll watch a match and I'll go, oh shit. Yeah, and it's like, it's it just takes your matches from like the matches that everybody, um, people might not talk about to like, dude, he knocked the shit out of that guy. Yeah. Like, that, I love those moments in wrestling. One of those, like, re I, I've kind of talked about it probably too much on this podcast, but like the match between um, Takeshita and Will Ospreay. Yes. Yes. That, yes. Of course, I watched that. Like, I that, like, it. two guys beating the shit out of each other, like, just a clinic. And then obviously, you have everything that, like, Brian Danielson's doing and Swerve and fucking, like, Swerve underrated striker. Underrated striker. Uh, Cedric Alexander is another underrated yeah, right. striker, dude. Like, the match with him and Kota Ibushi, like go look at, go look at the reason why Cedric got a job today. Yeah, like, that's a, yeah, it, it's a different level, different level. Um, and we'll touch on this more later because I have uh, our take the pictures portion, which I, I is going to bring up that topic even more when it comes to that. But let's get started, like with with your beginning in wrestling. Like, have you always been a fan, or, or is that something that came on later? I've always, as long as I can remember, like from the moment my being had consciousness, it's just like yeah. wrestling has been a thing that I wrestling, comic books, and like sports has always been a part of who I am. And I don't, I don't know the exact moment. I don't know the exact match. I know my first pay per view I ever watched was SummerSlam 2002, and like the first match I ever watched on that card is Kurt Angle versus Rey Mysterio. And, oh, but that was like after I rem I knew I was like I like WWE I want to watch this pay per view uh -huh. and like it was I can't remember like I get like flashes of memory of like Triple H hitting his pose in the corner or like I was but I'm young so like I really grew up in like the two early two thousand not early two thousand but like early twenty tens era of wrestling where uh -huh. like a lot of people fell off so I'm growing up with like yeah the the little kid version of wrestling that people have uh, today so oh yeah i just get flashes of memory i wish i could remember the exact moment that like pulled me in but i know like as i became a teenager and i fell out of it it was either i saw take over dallas with Sami Zayn and shinsuke nakamura yeah. once again two underrated strikers oh yeah but it's like it it, I don't know which came first or me seeing clips of Kenny Omega wrestling in Japan, but like in between those matches, I was like, wrestling's fucking cool. Like, what are we like? What are we talking about guys? Like, like <laughs> these superheroes going at it all of a sudden, like slugging it out with each other. Yeah. I'm like, this is supposed to be fake. You're hearing people, you're seeing people hit each other in the face and then loud noises off of those hits. And you're yeah. like, there's no shot. What I'm seeing here is fake before my eyes. Yeah. So, like, after that, it was just a wrap because probably from, like, the age of, like, 13-ish on, I didn't miss an NXT. I didn't miss an NXT TakeOver event. Raw and SmackDown weren't my favorite kind of thing because yeah. I'd see my, my favorites from NXT just get, like, lost in the shuffle. Oh, and I, really oh, wouldn't yeah. them. I wouldn't get to see them on TV. So, I was like, well, let me go watch NXT where it was hot. And then I started keeping up with the Indies. I started keeping up with ring of honor. I started going back and watching old PWG tapes. I started yeah. watching Noah and old best of the super juniors matches. And 
I found the Will Ospreay Ricochet match. I remember when that came out, like when that first happened and it came up on my YouTube feed about like one of the best matches in the world and all these people are mad about it. I watched it and I was like, bro, <laughs> what? Once again, what are we talking yeah. about here? Like, if yeah. you can't look at that and say that's objectively one of the coolest things I've seen, I don't think you like wrestling, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people that the Jim Cornettes that like hate that kind of stuff, but like even they have to give props to some of these matches. Like, I mean, they usually do in those scenarios. Yeah, you can't deny like the level of popularity it have to like mold a generation like how many times now when you're watching a wrestling match do you see somebody like take a like take a hurricane rana and then handspring out of it like that's a, a dime a dozen now in the first yeah. place i saw it was in the best of the super juniors with Will mm -hmm. Ricochet. so yeah. like ever since those moments like those key moments it's just been wrestling yeah. has been a key integral part of my life and eventually like when i was a kid you know you always want to do it you always want to talk about doing it so I, I just knew, like, eventually the time would come for me to try it. And here I am today, you know? Yeah. Uh, I Similar story, obviously. I'm not in wrestling, but, like, what got me back in wrestling was those early days of NXT. Like, the Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens feud, the the uh, Johnny Gargano and, and Tommaso Ciampa, like, like. Best baby face of all time, for sure. Yeah. Johnny Gargano. Like, he, he was, like. Before I truly knew like what into like what a baby face entailed, yeah. I knew Johnny Gargano was that guy. Like I knew I knew I need I needed this guy to win regardless. Just everything he did was everything in NXT. Like there was nothing, there was no segment on that show you wanted to be like, all right, skip. All right, yeah. let me go to the let me go get this taken care of real fast. But Ooh, you mentioned uh like kind of squandered call ups. Who were like some of your like the most bummed out you were? Like <sighs> Sami Zayn took a while to get going. Like he's there, like he's where he yeah. needs to be now. But Sami Zayn was a big one. I remember when was it right before WrestleMania when uh I don't forget I forget the year, but it was Johnny and Tommaso and Malachi and Ricochet all got caught up. Yeah. And like in any other case, I was like, oh, this would be this is about to be so hot. This is about to be fire. Right. I'm about to see Malachi Black or Alistair Black at the time, like on the roster, like knocking fools out. But like I remember Johnny and Tommaso were like in the midst of like a hot blood feud at that point. Yeah. But they came up teaming. And I was just like, <sighs> dude, <laughs> like, no, yeah. you can't do that. And then Ricochet and uh, Alistair retired for a little bit, and I thought that was cool. Like they had the match with the Viking Raiders at NXT Takeover, which is one of my favorites of all time. Yeah, but like uh, they had a tag team for a little bit, but it never really amounted to anything after that. And they eventually go their separate ways, and they just they get lost in the shuffle of the roster. Like those, I think those four, to which they've all found their place now. Thankfully, there's there's a place for them. Where I feel like they're not getting wasted, and like. I, those were the four where I was just like, ah, you know, I can't, I can't keep doing this, man. I can't yeah. keep doing this. And yeah. coincidentally, AEW was right around the corner. So like, I just, yeah. the alternative was there for sure. Yeah. Even like guys like, um, like Pac, like what they did with him with the fucking devil. Like <laughs> it's, he kind of got hot there towards the end though, with the, yeah. the cruiserweight stuff. Like, uh, I think, I think. I think putting in that's another division where I'm like, you got look at how much talent's there, but we're just not something's not connecting. And it's just like, but uh I think towards the end there he kind of found his stride and uh, he knew like he wasn't gonna get where he needed to be in WWE, so he left. Yeah. But it's uh there's just the list really goes on. And it yeah. wasn't towards the end there to where all of them started getting there. Finn Balor for what happened to him which wasn't like it, it was just a freak accident where he got hurt yeah. but he came in so hot like to be the first universal champion granted yeah. i mean we don't know what the story would have been for him after that it yeah. could have been like he run the he got the title one night and the next night he lost it to goldberg in like 50 seconds so like <laughs> we'd never really know yeah. but like i think he was one that gave me hope and then he got injured and came back and just never really yeah. never really hit the same stride yeah i think we were robbed of like a Maybe like right before Undertaker just started being unwatchable, but like, can you imagine the Demon versus the Dead Man feud? I mean, I was 
I was always one hoping for a Bray versus Undertaker match. Like, yeah. I mean, there's a case where you could say like Bray was almost like he wasn't a failed call up, but he definitely wasn't what like what yeah. they wanted, in my opinion. Of course. But regardless, I mean, the man was a God rest his soul, like one of the best characters of all time, one of the best wrestlers yeah. of all time. But like he he found he pursued like persevered regardless through okay. multiple different characters. So like. Even I think I still think his Randy his story with Randy Orton on SmackDown Live is like one of the best of that era. Oh yeah, the, mm -hmm. the except for the the cockroaches. Yeah, the the match was a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well now you're reminding me of all this stuff, and I'm like, what was it? <laughs> no, like like the the House of Horrors stuff, and like all mm -hmm. of that stuff, like on TV, it, it was great. So Just uh, it's tough to put on those kind of matches on the big stage sometimes. Oh, for sure. For sure. You, like that. Story that staging just doesn't really, it, it only lends itself to like so much mystique, especially being on like open air venues and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like it, I think it really damages like the more mystique characters more than it helps them. Oh, for sure. Um, and, and speaking of, of characters, you mentioned that you like comic books. Who are like some of your favorite comics? Um, <sighs> big batman fan over here like big like and not just like batman himself is cool but like batman's mythos and his like outer world like i'm a huge fan of like all of the robins from from uh -huh. nightwing to red hood to uh tim drake to damian like his outer world and his villains and it's just his entire world is just so especially like they all have like there's different aspects of like mental illness portrayed yeah. in so many different Batman villains. And I think that's like a motif that doesn't get talked about enough, how they all represent different aspects of like different, the Arkham games was like, they did a good job of like illustrating that and showing what the diagnosis of each of them actually is and why they're all going to an insane asylum instead of a prison. Yeah. But like that entire mythos, DC, everything is like, I'm a DC guy more than I'm a Marvel guy. And it hurts me that like all the DC movies have been so not, yeah, not good. But their animated movies are fantastic. But for the wider audience, they're not. They don't. They don't watch cartoons. So, sure. have you uh, have you watched the new Piglet series yet? I watched the first episode. I need to get caught up on the rest of it. But I loved what I saw out of the first episode. So, like, I and the actor who plays the penguin is just like that rendition yeah. of the penguin is like so. It's kind of out of left field because he doesn't have a British accent and he's like. He's not eloquent. He's like he's more of a like a mob thug. Yeah. But he's elegant. He's elegant in a mob thug kind of way. Mm -hmm. Like how like I, one of the things from the first episode, like how he's always fixing his hair before he goes into a, a thing. I was like, that's just such a a good like little addition to that character. But yeah, that is I'm I need to get caught up in that series. I haven't watched in probably like two weeks at this point. Uh, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I I did like the the Robert Pattinson Batman. What are your thoughts on that? Do you have a favorite Batman, like, uh, on, let's say, live action? So, Ben Affleck, I thought, could have been really good. Like, his fight scenes were really good. I thought his suit was awesome. I thought his, I thought everything, like, he had going for him could have led to so much better things. Yeah. But then it just stopped. <laughs> Robert Pattinson, I think, is a very good at making a Batman a psychopath, which I don't think has really been done yet in terms of like the live action movies. So I think there's a case there for him being the greatest. Like we got to see this next movie and then I'll be able to make somebody like he's starting strong. Christian Bale's greatness is on like undeniable in mm -hmm. terms of like Batman. The, vo the voice is goofy. I'm not going to sit here and say the voice is cool. Like some contrarians might because yeah. like if we're just being honest, it's goofy. Like he's a bad bear. Yeah, that's dumb. Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> but it's uh, it the movies that he has under his belt. Like, you can't deny that he was a great character and a great Bruce and a great Batman. Everything before then, like I said, I'm young. Like, I'm only yeah. 23, so I I haven't I haven't really delved too much too deep into those. Like, I remember the Batman and Robin movie, and I thought that was awful. <laughs> so, like, I don't I, I even as a, as a young kid, I was like, that's awful. Like, what am I watching? Yeah, but, as soon as they gave Batman nipples, they were it was over. I don't know what I don't know who but, decided that on the cutting room floor and how it still got in, but yeah. God help. Yeah. The the like the eighties 
Batman's had some really great villains though too. I like Michael Keaton as mm-hmm. Batman, but like Jack Nicholson, Danny DeVito, Arnold, um, you've got uh, Jim Carrey, and like mm-hmm. just like a crazy like looking back on it now. Um, they're, they're characters. They they serve the purpose that they need to, and like yeah, yeah. That cast is kind of crazy when you like when you throw it out there yeah. and they're playing Batman villains. Like yeah, right. I mean, I mean Danny DeVito is kind of wild, <laughs> but like, <laughs> but like yes. Maybe I should go back and watch some of those movies. They're good, especially if if you like um, a substance that may not be legal in all states. <laughs> <laughs> They're a good yeah, time. Absolutely. Um, but uh, but yeah. So, uh, comic books and wrestling. I think there's a big crossover because as I think wrestlers, you have the ability. It's like the closest that you can be to being a comic book character mm-hmm. because Absolutely. you get to tell a story that doesn't necessarily have to abide by the rules of everyday life. Nope. They're burning down houses on live TV. Like, yeah. I don't like uh, the rock has committed so many crimes. It's not even yeah. crazy within the last year. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's wrestling is just, is a such a wide world. It's the only art form that takes place alongside current events you know what i mean like it's it takes place in our mythology like our the world's canon but yeah. not but it exists somewhat outside of it because like you got to be able to bend the rules and logistics of like laws and things that work like that like swerve like cut a promo over a man's baby and threw a t-shirt on it like that's a crime <laughs> in so many different states yeah. it's not even it's not even funny but uh. it's wrestling is just such a cool art form i think it's um, a lot of people like roll their eyes when like they hear this, but I think it's like one of the best art forms there is, especially if like you're willing to look past all the goofiness it has when you can find just like a good story that is told through wrestling, especially like long overarching stories that don't necessarily have to connect, but the dots are there. Like Will Ospreay's entire career in Japan is a story. And like the ending he has where he's where his faction is going up against the bullet club and uh, the dog cage match. Mm. And like at the tail end, when everybody's in tears, me included, it's just like it's it's such a great like story of character development and growth and like achieving a goal you wouldn't have achieved, but leaving the door open to come back later. Yeah. It's so. It, there's so many different ways to tell a story in wrestling. And I think that's one of the things that makes it so great. Yeah. Even like you could do like him and, and Kenny, that story is, is in itself or, or Kenny and Ooh. Okada. Gosh. Like, yeah. Japanese wrestling is on a different, it's on a different level, dude. It's on a different, but it's like when people read regular comic books and then they go and read like a manga, like say you go and read, like you go and read Superman, but then you're like, all right, what's berserk about? And then, like, <laughs> like for the people who know, like, you're like, wow, there is a there's a leap there, yeah. <laughs> and like, and that's like the only thing I created I can equate it to. Like, there's good stories over here, mm. and there's great. I'm I'm gonna be biased. There's fantastic stories on the other side where the, I feel like characters are so much deeper and like the connection so much more personal. And yeah, it's I think J- Japanese wrestling leaves out like. It's almost in a vacuum. It's not like like you're rarely gonna have somebody like burn down a house, or you're gonna not gonna have like real, like, like all fighting for a woman, or like just a lot of the 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 overtones that wrestling kind of repeats over the years. Like these are like relationships. Like that's the story is these people's relationship. It's not that the relationship has to be taken outside the limits of of like it's like. It's almost like you could say, like, this is real world. Like, and these are how these people settle their problems. Mm-hmm. This is, it's this, the sport is, is the setting. Yeah. And it's the characters exist within the sport. And like, yeah. I think a lot of the times people hate the like, well, it's just a sport, you know, like, why, why should I care? And it's just like, yeah. well, people care about football. People care yeah. about, people care about soccer. People care about hockey. Like yeah. I was just in, I was just in Pittsburgh yesterday. Like I, I was, uh, I was at the Cowboys and Steelers games. There were 68,000 people. Oh, yeah. 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 
I don't yeah. I don't like the Steelers, but I don't like the the Cowboys better. Yeah, I'm a Colts yeah. fan, so I'm going to take a moment and just say, uh, how did it feel to get beat by Joe Flacco again, like out of the blue, like sneak yeah. attack? Listen, as someone who's like, I was a football guy when I played football, and much in the same way, like I'm a wrestler now, so like I only watch wrestling like i occasionally d- i would dip my toes in for like a game every season and would be like yeah the steelers still suck that's disappointing <laughs> yeah. and then like but going to that game and like losing in like the last fucking 17 seconds of the game <laughs> and then like after like a rain delay and but like to get back to the other point it's like sixty eight thousand people there yeah. that's a pay-per-view <laughs> oh yeah people here care and you can't tell me like it can't be the same way for wrestling. There's a sport aspect to wrestling. And right. in Japan, 40,000 people care about that every year. <laughs> like yeah. people are coming to the Tokyo Dome. People are going to Kurikan Hall, not just for New Japan, but for all the promotions. Like people are going. Yeah, you like, don't ever see empty crowds. Hardly, Japanese. hardly ever. Even on indie shows. Like, yeah, people love wrestling there. Like Japan, yeah. they're. I was talking about this yesterday, but like the culture of Japan is just so much different than ours. And like, they're so, they may not care on a surface level, but Uh they're respectful enough to like, to put everything else aside and at least pay attention. Yeah. like I think that's the biggest difference between like American fans and Japanese fans is like, as long as we pay attention, you're going to find something you like. And Uh like Japanese fans are paying attention. And yeah, how many matches you see where like it starts out crickets in Japan in like the first five minutes, but something small happens. And then like it builds and builds yeah. and builds. And by the end, everybody's into it. They're screaming the, the, the baby faces name maybe, or like yeah, just the energy is unreal. And it's, it's a different world, man. It truly is. Yeah. I've heard this from at least two people that have, have been in Japan and the way they've described it as in America, you've got maybe somebody and three of his friends that he brought trying to get them into wrestling or you've got like so and so in japan every single person bought that ticket because they want to be there for that show so yeah. while as you might have people talking or, or not paying attention like everybody has the same enthusiasm for the event and it really shows in, in how they react mm, absolutely and that's i think that's what makes i think that's another thing that just makes japanese wrestling on a different level is like a match can go from being like a three star to a five star if the crowd's super yeah. hot. Because then, like, the wrestlers are going to be on a different level, the reactions are going to be on a different level, and it's just going to be a it's going to be a better environment in general. Yeah. Um. So speaking of environment, um, sometimes I, this is going to get cut, but like sometimes I'll just throw shit out there and like see if I can alley oop it. I, I was not able to take that segue uh, in that situation. <laughs> Uh, but uh, sometimes I could do it, sometimes I can't. But so uh, we talk about this wrestling, and it seems like your discovering of NXT, and then leading that up to like the Japan, like we were just talking about, all this stuff kind of led you to want to be a wrestler even more than maybe when you were as a kid. So, what caused you to take the leap and kind of start your journey? So a lot of things. <laughs> like I, I played football like my entire life from like age five to 17 i was a football player every season i was always like whether it be like little league or through my school i was i was there and eventually like just being there for so long you get fairly good at it like i was a an all-state football player uh i was uh picked for conference games i had a couple offers on the table when i had like this path in front of me i was like okay well I could be a football player in college. I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but I'm big enough to like compete on certain stages. If I care Mm -hmm. about it enough, if I cared about it enough, I definitely think I could have gone maybe pro. (laughs) Like I just, I, it would have, it would have been a thing that required me a lot of hard work, but seeing the work I put in on the wrestling side, I know I could have done it, but I didn't have the love for football. Like I did, I do for wrestling now. Like I didn't, it wasn't what I wanted to do at the end of the day. And like, I think that was more cause like I enjoyed being around with my friends and then being in that, like uh, that brotherhood environment as opposed to the sport of football itself. Like watching football is a great time and like playing it was cool, but it just wasn't, I knew going to college playing football, all of my free time was going to be gone. I was going to be focused on this one thing and like trying to juggle that with school and like having a personal life just wasn't going to be the, it wasn't going to be the move. 
So I graduated. I declined all of my offers, which much to the hatred of my mother, like she did not approve of that whatsoever. But I went to college. And then when I went to college, first semester was fantastic, awesome. And then the second semester came around and COVID happened. Yeah. And I go from the 18 years of like living in, of like learning in school to trying to learn through a screen. And keep in mind, I had a gaming computer at this time with three monitors. So I was like, school on this monitor, game <laughs> on this monitor, and then whatever on this third monitor over here. So like, I'm not really paying attention. And like, I think that was just, I didn't want to be school just wasn't, it wasn't clicking for me in the same way, whether that be like, I'm not in the environment where I'm focused on learning. I'm not in the environment where I'm enjoying what I'm learning. There's nobody like their connections. You go from high school where like you have a connection with everybody in the classroom somewhat yeah. to go into college with like everybody here hates it. Nobody wants to really form a connection and nobody here wants to, nobody here wants to, to really do it at all. So yeah. like COVID happens and like, I get worse and worse and worse in school, which just leads to like a whole host of problems with like my mental health. And like, I'm trying to sh like live on my own and juggle a job with going to school during COVID. And like my, like my athleticism, like really floundered because I wasn't able to go to the gym where they like where I was because we we're all closed. Mm -hmm. And like, it led to me gaining a bunch of weight and like being super unhappy with myself and not like really having a direction in life. But the one thing that like stayed constant was like, I, was a wrestling fan. And in 2019, like October, 2019, AEW came to Charleston. And I had like this fleeting thought of like, it's right here in front of me, dude. Like I could do this. And then, you know, time goes on, COVID happens, whatever, whatever you lose that thought or whatever. And then I'm sitting in my bedroom, not my bedroom, in the living room. And I'm watching the first dance for AEW uh, okay. for CM Punk debut. Uh -huh. And I was like, dude, it's time. It's <laughs> like, it's time. And I might have, maybe I've already started before then, but like, maybe that was the moment where I was like, we have to, we have to flip this switch. Cause I started in May of 2020, 2021. So like it would have happened in August of that year. So May of 2021, I finally find a school after searching because I was going to go to OVW and that is not an uh, easy amount of money to come across, like yeah. just coming into it. So I find the school, the Power Slam Academy, ran by Chance Profit with uh, Jason Kincaid as one of the guest train, like the as one of the trainers. Yeah. And uh, I go there for a little bit and it's awesome. Like the first few days of training is awesome, but you don't have that like that push. You know what I mean? So I've I, like the first dance comes along and that push happens. Like you see all that emotion and you see all that and you're like, I want this, mm -hmm. whether it be like, I want that adulation that comes with that, or I just want to be in the arena. I just want to do, I just want to be around X, Y, and Z. So from that moment on, it's been, I, that coming October of yeah. 2021, I had dropped out of school. <laughs> I said, forget it. We're done with it. I don't need to be here anymore. I had, like locked in at my job and said, I'm going to make wrestling work. So on mm -hmm. the days that I didn't have work, I had wrestling practice Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those are my only days off a week. Mm -hmm. And I would, from the days I had practice, I would leave my house like five hours before practice, just because like I, it was an hour for me to get there and I know I needed to get there early and I would spend all day there, like from an hour or two before people got there to an hour to two before people left. Uh -huh. So from that moment on, it was just a nonstop cycle until I was started to hit the strides I wanted to hit. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of those strides, I think this is a good time to transform to our take the pictures portion of tonight's sh today's show. So uh -huh. like we're on like a, uh, a reality or whatever show, but here we go. Why don't you take a picture? It will last longer. I turn my camera on. I all right, so this is the take to pictures portion. I have done some stalking on social media. If you're not familiar, oh, great. Uh, we're going to go through some pictures from your career and, and, and kind of talk on some of these moments. Uh, this first picture, though, 
I need more information on it. And for those, I don't think anybody would ever say that I don't, I don't dig deep, but this next picture, I think uh, it might be the deepest that I've ever dug. So oh, I just, no. uh, so let's just, let's hop right into it. Uh, what's up with this dog surfing? What? Where is this from? Your, your Twitter in 2015. 2015. Yeah. I have no clue. What is this? It's just a dog on a surfboard. There's no shot. This was on my Instagram. Not my Instagram, my Twitter. Your Twitter, yeah. I have no clue. I'm going to be honest with you. Because 2015 would have been like when I was a child child. So yeah. like, maybe I had a meme that I like reposted to one of my friends. I don't think so. I'm going to, if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to, I'm going to find it. Uh, here we go. So the, the post is, it's from July 17th, 2015 at 4.49 PM. Uh, this is the picture and the caption is, damn, this dog has more game than me. That's insane, bro. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, that's I, I like. Listen, I couldn't tell you what I was thinking. I'm gonna be honest. That's <laughs> hilarious. I posted that. What was I doing? Where's the Twitter <laughs> game? Where's the Twitter game, Troy? Like, what are we doing? That was the like, second uh, Twitter post, uh, second Twitter picture that you ever post. I think they were called Twit Pics back then. Oh my <laughs> gosh, man! That's, I mean, it's that's dog insane. surfing. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't surf, so like the <laughs> post to stay is noted. Like yeah. I can't surf. Wow, I cannot believe that. Yeah. That's so, uh, so I, I didn't get the answers that I was looking for, but that's okay. I'm sure maybe yeah. one day I'll be able to to let's, find let's, it. Let's come with it. Let's come up with a conclusion. I I'm a I'm a I'm a break the ice. Can't swim. I can't. I can't. I am negative buoyant. Like I sink. I drop straight to the ground. Can't do it. So the fact that this dog is able to be on a surfboard and probably can surf well, yeah, means that this dog does in fact have more games than me. Does that <laughs> mean? Does that mean this dog can hit a spinning wheel kick? No. So in some aspects, I'm above this dog. Okay, I like that. Uh, I feel like That's we great. brought it full circle here. Full uh, but, circle. Yeah. Let, let's hop into the squared circle. See, sometimes, sometimes they hit. Uh, and this is, uh, it seems like maybe an early on uh, picture from your career. That's maybe. wow. I haven't, I haven't looked at this picture in so long. So this is from the first ever slam plaza event that we hold every year in Charleston, West Virginia. It's held by uh, my friend, Bishop Baylor. I say friend very loosely, like we're on better terms now, but we, we, we are rivals for all intents and purposes, but it, he holds this events every year. And it's like, it is a celebration of not only West Virginia wrestling, but wrestling in general in the city of Charleston. It's one of the biggest cities in the state. And we uh, do this in like a place that's like almost dead center of the town. Like we have people like just walking through, trying to get to uh, like bars and stuff down the road. You have uh, so many different parking hubs just around this area. And here, this happened after I I was a jerk at the time. I wanted the main event to be about me. So I broke up the main event between Jason Kincaid, Chance Prophet, and, uh, shoot, I forgot his name. Lee Everett. Right. But I, uh, Levi Everett. I broke this up. And, you know, being a greenhorn at the time, I, at this point, I was only like a few months in maybe like to taking stuff seriously and guy got handed to me. I got put through a table <laughs> by Jason and Levi and, uh, and I ended up getting butter churned on my chest. Pause. Uh, how was that? Uh, I'm unconscious here. So I really don't remember what that experience itself was like. Everybody else seems to be having a great time. This dude in the back couldn't have a bigger smile on the face for what he's seeing right now. Yeah. His friends over there are like, Oh, I gotta send this to Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i don't yeah this is a great moment because like the next year at slam plaza i wrestled bishop baylor in a street fight after we had told this story where he took my title <laughs> and uh a title that i was the first to win called the stern real regatta championship it's a championship for the city of charleston's uh regatta that they hold every year yeah he took it from me after i had won it 
it, through some contract negotiations. I'm only I'm only 22 at the time. I don't know nothing about contract negotiations. He f- had a loophole so where he would get a match afterwards, jumped me before the match started, and then took the belt from me. He's had that belt ever since and won't give him a memory match because he's scared. But I wrestled him at the second event, and I I uh, I won that match. And really? then past year, I got to wrestle Myron Reed at Slam Plaza, which was just yeah. another great experience in its own. So yeah. I, I typically use these Slam Plaza moments to judge where I'm at in my career and where my career is going, yeah. and all build upon each other slowly but surely. Yeah. If, if this is the starting point, there's only one way to go, and that's up. Yeah. Um, but uh, so you mentioned West Virginia. Um, uh, are you a West Virginia sports fan at all? Do you have a, an allegiance to the sports? Uh, not so much. I've lived in uh, Huntington for a number of years. So Marshall University is just like, right. by association. You know, you're uh, you go to the football games just to, you know, you're yeah. a college student. Just go there. And I guess. I have way more of allegiance to like the high school football culture in West Virginia is almost like, like Texas where high school football is like super hot. Yeah. Any small town in West Virginia on a Friday night, everybody's going to be at their football like game. And like, it's, we would always have like thousands of people at our football games where I went to high school. Yeah. And it's the culture that surrounds those places is just, it's otherworldly, man. It's, with out of all the things we could be doing, all the people in yeah. small town USA are going to go watch high school football like it's the Super Bowl. So yeah. it's always, um, always the best. And then, uh, what's your take on a, a nice, uh, fresh pepperoni roll? <laughs> oh my gosh, people are going to hate me for this. <laughs> I am not a fan of pepperoni rolls. I have had so many bad pepperoni rolls in my day. I've never had a pepperoni roll that I was like, damn, I'm going to get another one of those. Like pepperoni rolls are probably a mid, like the most mid snack I could, I could come up with right now. Yeah. And like, if you want West Virginia culture, you're going to go to Tudor's Biscuit World. You're not going to go to, let me go to this gas station, and get a pepperoni roll. Yeah. Like I, I'm going to be honest. I don't even think we really made pepperoni rolls. I, I don't think that's real. I think, I think that's just a, some like mythology we came up with along the way. Cause I don't, they're not that good. They're not like, I, I need more of those in my life. Okay. I'll take, maybe not actually. I, I don't. And the, in West Virginia culture, they're going to hate me for this. I, I'll be lucky if I don't have a, a mob outside of my house right now trying to get me to eat them, but Dude, I would love. <laughs> I would love people to just be like, "Hey, here, try this one." Like that sounds like a good night for me. Yeah, um, but I, I am a little hungry right th- at this moment in time. If you're ever in the West Virginia area, you have to 100 percent go to Tudor's Biscuit World. It is probably the most unhealthy breakfast food on the planet. But brother, like some about it, like that was tradition before you went to school. You yeah. stop at Tudor's Biscuit World. You get yourself whatever biscuit you want and large sweet tea. The large sweet tea is mandatory. It's only like a dollar more. But it's food like your grandmother made on steroids. It's okay. it's not good for you whatsoever. Like it's all like cheese and greasy. Like this girl probably hasn't been cleaned in like four decades. So you're eating yeah. the, your ancestors food. Like yeah. it's but it is so otherworldly good <laughs> like it's yeah. so it's another level of delicious so the way that you describe that i like i feel like if that recording got as much like play as um take me home country roads i feel like what you said would get oh. more people to come to west virginia because that sounds amazing dude speaking of country roads <laughs> that's a segue of my own Wrestling at CZW a couple of times in Haverty Grace, Maryland, has led to the crowd with me being announced from Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Yeah. Has led to the crowd singing Country Roads for about 30, 40 seconds while my match is going on, which is a great thing. Like, it's a great problem to have. But a good match to look at that is me and O'Shea Edwards, Uh where they, they sing that for the first few seconds and like, I'm not going to lie. I hear that song all the time 
especially when I tell people like, yeah, I'm from West Virginia. I remember one time I was in Ireland when I was younger. I've uh-huh. been, I, I'm, a, I'm a, like a well-traveled person, but like we just stopped in a pub for a, like a few hours just because we had some time to kill. Yeah. And they asked where we're from because the Irish people were very friendly. And they figured out we were from West Virginia and the entire pub, dude, <laughs> the entire pub. It started with one person and then three people yeah. and then this entire back section and even the bartenders are screaming country roads at the top of their lungs. Yeah. And you hear it a lot and it does it does ring true a little bit. But like it's sometimes you're like, oh, dude, <laughs> like, come on again. Yeah. So you mentioned Point Pleasant. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the topic of the Mothman. No, I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> uh, I knew you were gonna. We do don't that. have to. You could say that, and but this is gonna be another West Virginia hot take that people don't like. The Mothman is a cash grab, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to be the one to drop that on you real fast. Point Pleasant native for eighteen years of my life. Never once did I see the man. I didn't go looking. I didn't go looking, but yeah. I don't think he's out there. <laughs> I don't think he if he is, he's hid very well. But cash grab and one day instead of his statue in that town, it'll probably be mine. So like you better yeah. enjoy it while you got it. So <laughs> so uh to maybe talk about this more than you would like to, are there people that like 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 my I have know some very religious people that are like, Oh, you got better watch out for that devil out there. Like, are there people that are like out there? Just like, you better watch out for the Mothman. He's out there. And there's a few like people who have you know delved too far into illegal substances who might start yeah. to have seen claim they've seen the Mothman. But every so every year around September, there is a festival <laughs> called the Mothman Festival, yeah. where people from all over the United States and the world come to this one town with a population of about twelve thousand <laughs> to <laughs> like. I mean, it's a really good thing for the like the city's infrastructure and stuff like that. But like, there's one main road out of out of Point Pleasant, yeah. and trying to leave Point Pleasant on any time during those three days is a nightmare. So like, eh, you know, you can come for the festivities, but don't be expecting to see much. And please, for the love of God, if you don't have to drive, don't <laughs> like just <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> uh, I never, I never. That's an interesting perspective to hear about Mothman from somebody who's annoyed with having to deal with Mothman because that's like that's, that's all the towns that's all the towns known after, and like yeah. Point Pleasant's like a really historical town. Like there was a one of the battles during the uh, during the Revolutionary War took there I, I took place there I think, and like uh, we there was a, a a battle between settlers and the Native Americans who uh, who had claim to that land, and there's so much other history there that yeah. like gets overshadowed by this silver statue with fucking rubies in its eyes <laughs> on main street. So like, I, I see the appeal. Like it's, it's, it's something that a lot of people are going to want to come see, but like, there's so much more to point pleasant than this stupid statue with a, with a tramp stamp. <laughs> like, yeah. so yeah, like that statue in itself is a whole topic of conversation, but it's a, there's a lot more to point pleasant than people give it credit for. Okay. You heard it here first. Uh, uh, so this next picture, we talked about heavy hitters. Uh, I don't know that there's anybody that I've seen that uh, when he hits you, it sounds like a fucking bomb goes off. Dude, it feels like a bomb goes off in your skull is what it feels like. Mm-hmm. Like the match with Tankman was one I'd wanted for so long. Especially, like Tankman was a dude I'd watched when I was in high school a dude on the indies that like you, you don't, it doesn't like, you don't really get to put that stuff in perspective. You don't really think about what could happen until you're in the game. Yeah. So like from the moment I was in the game, I was like, I want to wrestle that guy. Like, yeah. And the dude once un like, you'd say underrated striker, but he gets all the credit he really deserves. Like he, the only thing that's, he doesn't have is a contract, which he needs at this point. Yeah. Like that's, that's a fact. And like the match with Tankman was so it was everything I wanted, but like I do this to myself all the time. Like I'm my own biggest critic. Like anytime I watch tape back of myself, I try not to, I end up hating my performance Yeah, <laughs> every single time. Like I never get a performance. I'm like, that was fantastic. But like this match right here was so much fun. It's so much fun. 
the day after wasn't very fun when I oh, had yeah. to like, pull myself out of bed or like try to move what I had left of my body. But it was a, it was a great time for sure. Yeah. When I saw this picture, I had to bring it up just because nothing like a fucking sound of a forearm from, from Calvin Pegman. Uh, this next picture here, uh, CZW, uh, best of the best. I don't, can't tell what year that is. This was the first best of the best 2020. Uh, not twenty, not the first best of the best back after oh. they had taken their hiatus, but it was. Uh, I wasn't actually in this best of the best. This picture is more to illustrate, like the amount of black talent that CZW like had at the time. Yeah. Like it was, it was unprecedented. Like I come from West Virginia. There's not a lot of people that look like me here mm-hmm. in the state, let alone wrestlers that look like me in the state. Yeah. And like being in like. A locker room like this and an environment like this like i can like ruthless lala and isaiah wolf and are like i look up to them a whole a whole bunch and like yeah. rich swan being there and the rep and deshaun and boom and fred yeah and like cash flows back there like there are so many people in this picture and the amount of talent that's here it just dude oh yeah really, this picture is crazy I think O'Shea's in this picture too. Yeah, there he is right there, right behind Swan. But it's a, uh, it was, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. And then, I, should, I should look back at these pictures more often. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, we've got some more for you here. Um, speaking of uh, Ruth Osala, I just have one question. Uh, what, what that lariat do? <laughs> it knocks you the fuck out, is what it does, bro. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah much love to Lala. She's, she's done a lot for me, like more than like a lot of people like would guess, but like it's, uh, wrestling her was a fun, is always a fun experience. We've wrestled, we've wrestled a whole host of times. We've, I've been fortunate enough to be in the ring with her a lot. And she, uh, she is a malicious teacher. If I can get that, if like <laughs> I can put those words across, like she does not, yeah. she doesn't pull any punches and it, it's what makes her so like, so fantastic. Yeah. Shout out, uh, La La. Uh, I beat her though. I'll throw that out there. I beat her. I beat her already. <laughs> so like, I don't, I don't need nut to prove nothing else to nobody. Yeah, I, I'd prefer if you didn't clip this part and put it on Instagram, so I don't got to deal with those repercussions. But like, yeah. dude, I see you looking down at like a notebook or something. Don't oh no, it. I don't yeah. have a notebook. I, <laughs> I have ADHD, so I just, I'm usually playing with some sort of uh, <laughs> object. Uh, uh, you know, something hurts when you look at the referee and he's yeah. He's been, yeah. I think she she kicked me in the back, I think, or chopped me in the back, one of the two. I wouldn't put it past her. Like she yeah. she 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 throws those. <laughs> Just hearing the admiration the way that she has for how um New Jack like held handled shit in the ring. Uh, it. it gives me no surprise that that she is just very she, she's all about it, 100 yeah. percent about it. Uh, but yeah, I, I love Lala. Uh, can't wait for her to come back. Uh, I know she's gonna fucking tear the house down when that comes. But anytime I see it, I gotta ask what that lariat do. Uh, this next one, I think we kind of maybe touched on this a little earlier, or something. Uh, but I leave leave this match. I'll let you talk about it because you know more than I do. So this is in my training school, the Paris Swim Academy, when we had our location outside of Charleston, and. Uh, this was at the end of a one night tournament where I got to wrestle uh, a few of my peers. I got to wrestle Casey King, another person who's helped me come up in the game of wrestling. And then for the last match, I got to wrestle Jason Kincaid and I actually beat Jason Kincaid for our championship. And I got to be the first champion of Power Slam Pro or the Power Slam Academy by association. And like that, it was a crowning achievement for me because I had worked. I mean, I still work hard to this day, but like this, it's like the first milestone Mm -hmm. that you get in your journey. Like the first, it's my first championship and I'll never, um, I'll never forget how I felt that night. Like afterwards where like he, I remember chance, our head trainer, he had bought the championship And, like, he told us we were going to have a tournament for it. And, like, everybody was sitting there holding the title and touching it. And he was like, do you want to touch it, Troy? And I was like, no. (laughs) I don't want want to touch it right now. Like, I'll touch it when it's mine. 
And like the first time, like I got dropped in my hands, like I had to stop. It's gonna sound, but I had to stop like tears from coming out because I was like, okay, because yeah. I don't, I, I try not to like harp on these moments too much. And I know that's not good for you. Like you should look at your accomplishments, but I never want them to be like my final one. There's yeah. so much I want to do in wrestling. And like, it's, it's just good to have like these little, like these little keepsakes along the way to keep you going. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And just like Jason Cade himself is like so underrated. I cannot speak enough about how much I admire that man, how much that man has poured into me, how much that man has done for me. Like that dude, that is a underrated talent if there ever was one. A hundred percent. Just can he's kind of done it all mm-hmm. on his terms. And yeah, like Still Dude, doing it to this day. Evolve, Ring of Honor, a few spots with NXT. He's toured Japan, like he's toured Mexico. Like what? Yeah. And like that, his mind for wrestling is, I haven't come across somebody who's got even like the top level talents that I've wrestled. Right. I, there's, there are very few people like Jason and in, in that yeah. aspect. Also, uh, social media game. One of the fudder follows. Yeah, if he saw that this dog got more game than me, he'd be like, "Dude, what the? F- what are you doing? Like, what? Is- in 2015? Like, you you were supposed to be a, a Twitter kid? Like, I don't <laughs> like. Yeah, he. Yeah. But yeah. hilarious social media game. Yeah, yeah, the memes, the uh, the calling people out, like just just the random pictures of him, like in a mountain. Just Dude, he, he's at Muscle Beach right now, apparently. <laughs> like, I, like, he just posted a picture of on Facebook of him at Muscle Beach. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, dude? Yeah. He's living his life. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Kincaid, uh, anytime I get to see him wrestle, is always a good time. It's fantastic. Uh, and then I think we kind of mentioned like, to build up to this a little bit. You mentioned Kenta earlier, um, Isaiah Wolf, and how much they've done for you. Uh, well, let's talk about this match. Mm -hmm. so i remember when i got this graphic sent to me for the first time it was a few days probably like a few weeks before may 18th i was sitting in my house and like uh i got it sent to me and like i jaw hit the fucking floor dude (laughs) like that is japanese wrestling legend wrestling legend in any circle like and this was the first, I think, one of the first times I wrestled Isaiah, if not the first time. But like, it uh, it was so. This is another one of those milestones that I'm talking about that you're like, you can't. You, I don't want to like take the time and be like, man, that's really cool that I did that because I don't want it to be the last time I I wrestle Kenta, let alone like, I don't want my career to stop here, kind of thing. So yeah. like, it was so insane and then the build up to that day it felt like my body was locked like i i don't know like what the the freeze out of it was whether i was just nervous for the match leading up or like dude you're wrestling one of your guys like oh, i've yeah. been at this point like i'd been on shows with like i had wrestled rich at this point it was another one of those situations where like those are my guys like the guys i grew up idolizing like i've been on shows with like old school wrestling legends like WWF legends and like early 2000 legends where I didn't really get to, I didn't get to absorb much of that wrestling. So I'm not, I'm not as starstruck as other people would be, but like this (laughs) (laughs) dude, I was starstruck. And then like meeting him easy, like just a professional, like done this thousands of times. And like, his he has an aura about him like he doesn't need to he doesn't need to prove that he's a he's a hard ass or anything because you know once like once he's in the fucking ring it's kenta like it's yeah. it's his game that's his domain dog yeah. being another moment like that i remember from this night is like being in the ring where where we were at the power plant in baltimore it was there's a giant like titan tron like from the floor to the ceiling and I had made my entrance. Isaiah had made his entrance and I'm sitting in the corner. And then the bullet club logo flashes up on the screen and Kenta's music starts to hit those drums where, or those like, it's just, 
And then like you start to see his highlight tape in there and you're like, oh shit, where the fuck am I? I'm a, I'm a wrestler right now. I'm wrestling fucking who? That says Bullet Club. What? The, I was just in West Virginia like a few years. Like what? I was like, what? It's it was such a surreal moment. And like, I I feel like I remember. I feel like you could probably watch it if my if I was on camera during that time. But like, it came up on the screen, and I was like, oh shit! Like, cause I yeah. I was in the game, and that dude hits. So hard. I took a back <laughs> fist from this guy that felt like it went through my skull. Like I felt like my ear was on the floor and like, and not just one, but two of them. And it did not feel good at all. He kicked a hole through my chest. He double stomped my back at one point in this match. Yeah, Like he beat the tar out of me. And I got to screw Isaiah Wolf out of the win in the end. So I feel pretty good about that part. But yeah, wrestling Kenta is definitely like, it's something I want to do again, one on one for sure, just because I feel like there's more that I can not only learn there, but like maybe if the fucking stars align and like, I don't know, my zodiac is is in the right fluctuation or like whatever amount of luck I need, maybe I can pull out a victory by God's grace. Yeah. But like, I, it's a thing that I would love to do in Japan. Like, yeah. That's a, that's definitely something that I want. Yeah. Um, just a really cool moment. I, I talked to Isaiah about it too uh, when he came on recently. And I, for him, it kind of it was like a similar experience. Um, what, uh, after the match, um, that wrestlers typically will talk and kind of decompress. Um, what did Kenta have to say to you guys after this one? He's, he had to wrestle three more times that day. So, like, he didn't. Sure. Yeah. He, he went on to win the best of the best that year. So like he, he didn't get to, we, I didn't get to pick his brain as much as I would have liked to. And like yeah. in those moments, I feel like I always get like, man, I should have, I should have asked this or I should have asked that or I should have said more, but it was a moment where after I needed, I needed to decompress by myself. Oh, yeah. I like I needed to soak in that moment. And like, dude, I just wrestled Kenta. And then after that, I went back to my car after the show and I had a flat tire, but like, that's neither here nor there. Like, it, yeah. at the, and it also didn't bother me because, dude, I just fucking wrestled Kenta. Like, I don't like I could get shot in the foot and I could be OK. Like, <laughs> that was it was. Yeah, that's a great time for sure. And talk about a, a waste, another wasted NXT kind of talent. Like, the- God. So he and then he got injured, then went to 205 Live. And some of the stuff he did was good, but he just never I feel like he never got to be him. Oh, no, which, no. Which was like, that was such a, it's such a wasted opportunity. Yeah. And th- with the roster they had at the time when he came in, just <laughs> imagine if they could have made, yeah. I know. Could you imagine him versus Joe on a pay per view? Oh. Dude, like, it's one of the things we've never got. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there, I think that's a chance we could maybe get, but I mean, obviously it won't be the, the same. Yeah. Um, no. I mean, or it, or it would, you know, Joe, I don't think Joe's really slowed down from being Samoa Joe. And I don't think Kenta's really slowed down from being Kenta. He's not yeah. giving people Falcon arrows off the apron to the floor anymore, but like, <laughs> thank God for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to do, I don't have to worry about that. Is that a move where you were just like, yes, sir, I'll take it. Like just cause it's Kenta or. <laughs> I, mean, I you, uh, during these matches, like especially in best of best, you're looking for the moments to pull your matches apart. Like, yeah, there was the high flying match, there was the technical match. This was the striking match, and like Kenta pulling off a double stomp on me, I'm fuck, I'm cool with that shit. You could damn near shoot me in the ring, and I'm gonna be cool with it. Like, yeah. I don't. There's not a lot of things that I'm not willing to do, and like, I mean, granted, the double stomp didn't feel great, but like, it's a, it's, yeah. it's Kenta, dude. Like, I'm not gonna be like, he's a professional. He's not going to go out of his way to like fucking let me just throw this haphazardly and forget it. Yeah. No, I I could put my trust in people like him, his talent, and I'd be fine. Oh yeah, um, yeah. This I think this might be the last one, um, but yeah, I thought that would be a good way once we kind of got into your career to kind of elaborate on some special moments and kind of watch how you've grown. I'm going to play the intro again, and then we'll we'll, we'll uh, wrap things up. Why don't you take a picture? It'll last longer. I turn my camera on. I cut 
All right, so that was Take the Pictures. Um, there was a picture that I, I almost picked of you just with a crocodile. Oh, dude, if I was in Georgia. That would have been a better one for the first one. I'd have waste. I'd have way better story for that one. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, I thought that like, like, I think like, obviously people know about you because you get, you're getting like these cool opportunities. You're facing these cool people. But at the same time, I feel like more people need to know about Troy Parker. Um, just like you have a unique style, like you, you get it. Like some people like. Maybe not like, I don't know. Let me back up a little. Like, you get Troy Parker. You get what you want. And, like, you could definitely tell with what you do in the ring and the work that you put in uh, that you're you're setting yourself up for success with whatever you do. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that for sure. That means that means a lot to me, dude. Yeah. But, like, I, I'm hoping this will shine some light to maybe people who haven't heard you or even, like, I, I like to think of these as more like here here's a part of my resume like this is what i do in the ring but this is who i am outside of the ring um what are some things like outside of the the ring that you want people to know about uh troy parker like what are some of your other hobbies what are like what are some of your passions like as, as wrestling has always right now like my really my one and only focus and like in terms of like stuff I do outside of the ring, everything that I do outside of the ring is pretty much in service to the game right here. Yeah. Like I've always been like a weightlifting person. Like I've always loved being in the gym, like regardless from like, at, maybe not at first when I first got in, but nobody likes being in the gym at first. It just yeah. sucks. But like I, in high school, I held, I got two of my school's like lifting records with deadlift and power clean. It was a 550 down bed, 550 pound deadlift I did at 17. And then it was a 325 pound power clean that I did at 17. Mm -hmm. To this day, those things haven't been broken. And those numbers, granted, I haven't gone back and tested because my body works a little bit differently now. I'm a yeah. little, I'm a little beat up. So I don't be deadlifting and throwing around weight like that every so yeah. often. But like being in the gym is like, it's either you can, if you want to find me, I'm either at my day job working for money to help my wrestling career, or I'm at the gym to help my wrestling career, or I'm training to help my wrestling career. There's, I really don't have a lot of downtime where I come home and like I play video games or like my schedule is super tight. And like every so often, like I'll get a few days where like, I'll go do something with the family or I'll go on yeah. vacation, like very sparingly, like, it's a lot of the things I do in, are in service of wrestling. And so like, yeah. it sucks that I don't have a lot of free time, but I, I love what I do. I love wrestling. I love weightlifting. I love going to the school and training. I love, I hate my job. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, mean, <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand that place. I think it's horrible and I want to get out of there as fast as possible, but like it provides an avenue for me to be able to continue doing what I love to do. So like, yeah. I have to show some appreciation for it in some sense of the word. So um, as somebody who has not a lot of free time, not because I'm in the gym, um, but just because like this, uh, I have a, a baby at home at, at work. Um, when I get like an hour where I could just like lay on the couch and I don't have to like think of like, you don't have any like impending responsibility. What is, what are you, what are you doing in that moment when you have that? Like, <sighs> It's going to sound crazy. <laughs> I'm watching wrestling. <laughs> it's like, it's still, it's still a level of like release for me. And like, I, there will be times where I'll like, I'll be deep into like studying tape where I'm like, Oh my God, dude, this all looks the same. Like I just yeah. you know, like get wrestling away from my brain, but there's still times where like, I need to relax. I need to de-stress. I need to just be in my own world. Yeah. Let me throw on an old wrestling match that I love to watch and just reminisce. Like, that Will Ospreay's last match in New Japan is one that I throw on. Uh, a Katsuyori Shibata's return to wrestling after his like catastrophic injury, like uh -huh. the match, not even like his like first real match with Ren Narita, but his match where he wrestled Zack Saber Jr. for five minutes in a shoot style wrestling match. Uh 
Uh-huh. That's one of the ones where I'll put on like the matches where the aura of the match itself precedes whatever else is going on. Yeah. So like, I don't have to worry about like, oh, they didn't hit that spot correctly, or oh, the footwork here could have been better, or oh, this spot would have worked better if it was like this. Where it's just like two of my favorites, or one of my favorites, enjoying the what their art and what they're doing. Yeah, those matches that I can just throw on and be like, this is great, this is fantastic. Or I'm trying to catch on but sleep. Like there's there's those are two sides of the the same coin when it comes to my decompression time. Uh, you've got one match. Like this is the only match that you could ever watch again. What match would you pick? <laughs> Dude, that's a hard fucking question. Okay. Uh, you could do maybe a top five if that would be easier. Let's do top five. So, uh, no, I'll put number one: Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura from Takeover Dallas. The near fall that Sammy gets where he ducks out of the Kinshasa and grabs the blue thunder bomb, and it's one, two. You hear the entire crowd go three, but they go throw, and the entire crowd had just got caught up in this near fall. God, that so that moment in that match, just like it. I still get the like butterflies of like, oh shit, it's over to like, yeah, it's not. And then, uh, Will Ospreay, Kenny Omega from Wrestle Kingdom where Will just gets battered the whole time. Like, another level of storytelling. Where, mm-hmm. like, you you know what the match... Like, people think they know what the match is about. Like, Kenny trying to come back and, like, upstage Will. But it's really about Kenny getting a revenge for what Will Ospreay did to Kota Ibushi at, in Wrestle Kingdom in years prior, where he knocked him out and had him stretchered out. Yeah. Like, Kenny Omega finishes that match with, a, with Kota Ibushi's finishing move and then a one-winged angel. There'd be no other reason for Kenny Omega to throw that finishing move on other than the men like, oh, I'm thinking about him too. This is for him. Yeah. Like that whole match is just like fantastic. And uh, a few other matches that I just love to watch over and over and over again. Uh, there's a three way between, I think, Kenta, Danielson, and Joe. And the finish of that match is Joe popping off Danielson into Kenta's knee for a go to sleep. Yeah. It's it's like three way with like one of my favorites, like three of my favorites. Yeah. Like that is, uh, that's gosh. It's just like thinking of like where those people are now and like what all they've done to wrestling. Like those were just like people. So trying to make their name in the game at that point. And like, it's they they've done that and then some and oh, yeah and i think for like maybe like the last match we'll do swerve and joe and uh aw when swerve won the title because for this is for different reasons but like a few weeks prior prior aw was in west virginia for the third time and uh i got to be an extra at that backstage taping and like it was a really full circle moment for me. But the angle that I got to be a part of was I was a security guard and I got to break up Joe and Swerve from having an altercation. Mm-hmm. And I got to be in between Samoa Joe, like like few feet away from me. Yeah. And Swerve Strickland standing up in the turnbuckle. And I'm just in between those two people. And like Swerve's music is playing and couple thousand people are saying Swerve's house over and over and over again. And like that energy right there, I think being a part of that segment made that match mean so much more for me. Mm. But like, that's a moment I won't ever fucking forget ever. Yeah. Ever. Awesome. Um, So we've talked about um, why you work so hard. Um, and, and all that you do and, and kind of how everything is rolled in wrestling, what are your goals? Like, um, what do you want out of wrestling? Right now, I think my most immediate goal is getting to Japan. I will get to Japan. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know for what promotion, but I know I'll get there. It's it's only a matter of time. And, like, I, that is my main focus right now. Overall, I want to do it all. Like that's the best way I can, I can put yeah. it. I want to, I want to be, I want to be on every spot in, in the card. I want to be the opener. I want to be, 
I want to be the match where people are expected to go get popcorn. I want to be the match right into the main event. I want to be the main event. I want to hold the championships. I want to be in the Hall of Fame. I want to do all of it. And I want to wrestle as much as I can. Like I've done, I've done so much training and so much preparation and so much like trying to perfect my style that the only thing now that's missing is the, the, the extra reps in addition to like truly perfecting what I need. And yeah. like that entails with just me wrestling as much as I can. And I, that's the goal is just finish it. If wrestling was a video game, I would like to look back in the menu on that video game and it'd say a hundred percent with all the check marks fucking clicked. And I could be like, I can close the book on that and be like, all right, we did it. Let's go. Let's move on to the next thing. I think that might be the best way that I've ever heard somebody describe that. So congratulations. Like it's a question that gets asked a lot, but like I, yeah, you perfectly wrapped it all up without even having to like list everything. I think everybody does. Um, I definitely think you would thrive in Japan. Um, somebody that is local to this area, um, we've had on the podcast, but JAC, like he, just to be able to see him like yeah, over there. He, uh, I've been, I've been talking to him about it and like he, uh, he, that's a match I haven't gotten. We were supposed to have it, but the show got canceled, yeah. but it's a match I would love to have a match. I'd love to have in Japan too, but like <laughs> it's talking to him about it. I could just tell like, the th- cycle of training, wrestling, eating good food, and going back to bed. It, like, God, dude, that'd be amazing. Like, that's a that's a dream. And I can I just I can't wait to see firsthand like how much it has helped his wrestling career when he comes back. Oh yeah. I'm so excited for that. Cause like you go from like hitting like the 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 Tennessees, the West Virginias, the North Carolina, South Carolina, but now like not only are you in the ring with this this great Japanese talent, but like Alan Angels is there. Mm. Like all of these other like next level indie stars are there too, and you're getting to learn from everybody. And mm-hmm. and the training from what I've heard in Japan is fucking insane. I love it. I love that challenge. I I would I would either I would either thrive or fail. I may fail at first, but that just gives me the opportunity to come back the next day yeah. and try again. So like I. Yeah. I would love to be in an environment like that where I'm forced to bring out the best of me at all times. Yeah. Kind of like Batman. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Way to bring it back. We're doing, you said you couldn't do these. these (laughs) Here we are. Yeah. But yeah, I like everybody that we have on is, is great for the most part. Like, I I don't think we've had anybody that I'd be like, fuck that guy. Maybe one. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but like you find certain people that you just root for like even like i appreciated your work and like i felt that you were underrated but like talking to you and hearing your passion and all this stuff like you were somebody that i am now actively rooting for for the like rest of my life um because you're doing it right you're putting in the work and like i'm a really big fan of, of the style of wrestling that you're doing as well um but yeah i i wish nothing but the best for you um and it's like not only because like i want you to succeed but i want to see what that looks like like i want to see what a uh, troy parker japan run would look like those matches or something i'd want to see so fucking legendary this is what yeah. it looked like dog so i i i can only fucking i can only dream until it's reality you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so i'll i'm gonna try something somewhat new it's not that new it's not that original but i'm going to give you the floor anything you want to talk about anything you'd like to mention if there's any questions you have for me if there's just like a hot take that you have the floor is yours you have the talking stick uh, i will i will shut up now all right i'm gonna say it the upcoming political climate no i'm playing i'm joking i'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to i'm not trying to get get canceled but like there's a lot of uh, stuff like we, you know, that like happens in our day to day life that like it really like bothers the fuck out of us and it like latches on, yeah, for weeks and months in addition. But like, I truthfully believe that like we all have that one thing that like truthfully makes us tick and like the one thing that like we we live for, for lack of a better term. And like for me, 
wrestling has been that thing. I don't know if I, I think it is wrestling. I mean, maybe it's just entertainment itself. Maybe it's the athletic side of it, but like for lack of a better, like for being unable to put it into words, I found something that I can constantly live for every day and it doesn't feel like a chore. Yeah. And I think everybody has that thing to a certain degree. Like whether you, whether you're having trouble finding it, I think the only person that can find it is you. And I think the only person that can give it power is you. And by that, I mean, don't, no matter what your parents would say or your, your close relationships may say is like, if there is something that you love to do, you got to do that point blank period. Like, cause life is so, so miserable when yeah. you try to put that on the back burner and <laughs> like, I appreciate what you do here because this is just an aspect of like, of my art. So like, this is just another, yeah. another tier to it. And like, you're, you've done it. So well. I remember like watching as you started this thing and seeing some of my friends get like spots and I knew one day I'd be here. I wasn't yeah. going to ask for it, but I knew one yeah. day I'd be here. And like, it's, uh, I just say, I just want more people to find the thing that makes them tick. Like, yeah. like truthfully makes them tick the stuff that they lose time doing the stuff that they like, they look at their time and like, Oh shoot. I was supposed to be here today. <laughs> like yeah. uh, it's, it's a, uh, I, I see two people, especially like with the, my day job, like I, I work in a very menial day job. So I see so many people, so many coworkers and people who come in like, just like disheveled at like the things that they have to do on a day to day basis. Cause yeah. it's not what, it's not what they want to do. Yeah. But find that thing that makes you go and then go, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and be unapologetic doing so. Cause you don't yeah. gotta, you don't gotta justify that to nobody but yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. And you'll find your, your family by doing that. Like, Oh dude, absolutely. Absolutely your friends may not understand or or your family won't understand. But when you reach the place where everybody is like minded, like you are, Mm -hmm. you're going to realize that you've never been alone in this. You just didn't know who they were at the time. The way I see it is like, you're the only one that gets to sit in your coffin at the end of your life. So like, why should you be trying to please anybody else? Of course. Uh, And to go back to you, like stating, like, like wanting to be on the podcast, I like, I don't I don't know if it's like life or like the concept of like manifesting or stuff, but I believe that things happen when they happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like the reason that you were on today is because your story has never been like as like it's the perfect time for your story to be heard. Where it, like maybe if you did this a year ago, mm-hmm. you would have a different perspective or things wouldn't be the same. But now you've got like this, like, I feel like if people were to listen to this podcast and like take away some of the things you just said, like it could have an impact on somebody's life. And not to say that that's what I'm providing for people, but I think that things happen when it's time. Mm -hmm. And I found with these a lot of times where like, sometimes it's like in this case, it's just like, I have ADHD and I forget to like follow up and like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like, brother me too see you yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you i understand that struggle wholeheartedly yeah but like when this story is right and when it gets told i think that's like one of the like like an episode where you like leave with fulfillment because like you started and you like went all the way around and you like perfectly encompassed everything and that's not anything to do with me it's just the conversation that people have um i think that's really great and i think that's what we did here um, but that, that's all you, cause I, I've done a lot of these and, uh, it really is just me asking questions and a lot of, a lot of things and the more questions I have to ask in an episode, the, the worse off it probably is. So, uh, <laughs> I, I could talk about myself for, yeah. for as, as, as much as I don't want to say it, like, cause it makes me sound like somewhat conceited. Like I could talk about wrestling and like why I love it so much for probably days. So that- like. That's passion. I mean, as as much as I like, I we could probably I would love to do a part two. Yeah, of course. A few years from now, after I've got a more like a few more accomplishments under my belt, uh, yeah, and a more and a little bit more perspective to add to to everything. But yeah. it's just 
it's what I love, man. For sure. Yeah. You could definitely tell. And we'll definitely have you back on. Um, we'll talk about your time in Japan and some of the, the dream matches that you've been able to come. Um, but before we leave, where could everybody find you? Uh, your pro wrestling tees, your social media, your YouTube, your TikToks, all that fun stuff. So pro wrestling tees is Troy Parker shop. Please buy a shirt, please. You know, I don't have to, I don't have to actually supply them that way. And I get a little bit of a cut back to me. So it's a perfect way to support me. And you get a great shirt. In addition, my social medias, I am Troy Parker official on my Facebook, my Instagram, and my TikTok, Troy Parker pro. Apparently there's a picture of a dog back there somewhere. Yeah. 2015, 2015, July. July. Just beware. I was a kid with different, <laughs> I was a kid. So I thought, I thought I was doing the social media game right. And I wasn't so like, <laughs> so preface, I promise. I think I've gotten a little bit better since then. I'm no Jason Kincaid, but I'm I'll yeah. be there one day. But, uh, and I also have a, a YouTube Troy Parker official, I think, or just Troy Parker. You can find a, a lot of my matches there or just search Troy Parker versus, which I do with like all the wrestlers I want to watch. And yeah. all my matches will come up from Kentucky to Tennessee to Ohio to yeah Philly to Maryland to all the other places that I've been. So yeah, what well, we didn't get to talk about, but, uh, O'Shea Edwards, your match with them for CZW is on your, on their as well mm-hmm. so definitely check that out mm-hmm. and uh yeah if you see uh, troy on a card near you make sure you show up and bring some some crisp cash so you can buy some merch absolutely absolutely and i'll take a picture with you i'm a nice guy <laughs> who do you think you are i am i warm it up like kane in his prime fuck with us you insane in the mind you cowards way out of line money talk for you wasting my time you don't want to put the work in you just want to taste of the shine we'll talk so it's hard to trust i'm in it for the long ride